skulls on it. Oh, it's quite big that one, isn't it? Anyway, so we're going to talk about adaptations for nutrition. Um, we're firstly going to look at carnivore and herbivore dentition. So I've got a nice big herbivore skull here with its uh, sideways facing eyes and a lovely forward facing carnivore skull. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the herbivore for a minute and we'll start with the carnivore because my favourites. So uh, this kind of skull is the skull found in, well this is actually a dog skull, um, but you think of all the sort of uh, the canids, wolf, fox, they've all got pretty much a similar skull. Um, cats have a very similar skull because they're carnivores and theirs is sort of slightly foreshortened, a bit like they've been hit with a brick. Uh, they've got slightly flatter faces. Um, but also bears and weasels and ferrets and otters and um, I don't know whether you saw the little clip of the girl being pulled into the sea by a sea lion. <laughs> Tasty snack there. Seals also, very much like a dog skull. They are carnivores. It's easy to think, you know, they, they've got these beautiful big eyes and but they are carnivores. They're with a big vicious carnivore skull. So, um, really can see these. so I'm going to just take the skull apart and we're going to sort of do a dentistry thing. So you know when you go to the dentist and he checks all your teeth. So he starts off there, we've got the, ins the skull symmetrical and we've got the incisors at the front. And these are quite um, sharp and pointed and they're really for stripping flesh off bones. So, you know, they, if you watch a dog with a bone, it'll kind of be nibbling the bits of meat off it. Um, Chris Packham, uh, in, on the, I think it might have been the one show, um, had a fantastic, or also spring watch or autumn watch, or something, showed a fantastic fox with a bit of carrion, and it was sort of gripping on to, the, to a, one of the muscles on this deer's leg, and just then tug, 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 until it was off. Uh, so in sh incisors, really sharp and pointed. Then we've got the two most obvious teeth, the canines, <coughs> um, and they're probably most obvious, I think, when an animal does that at you. So these very pointed ones, and these are the sort of stabbing, killing teeth. And if you think about it, they've got prey in their mouths and they're gripping on and the prey's trying to wriggle away. So these teeth are recurved to prevent the prey escaping. And the jaw of the animal will only move up and down. It will only move vertically and that's to prevent dislocation. So in the wild, you know, a carnivore with a dislocated jaw is a dead carnivore because it will starve to death. Um, and then we come to the um, sharp, pointed, triangular teeth. And these are the carnassials. And the carnassials act like shears. So they are for shearing bone and shearing meat off bone. This is what gives the animal its sort of really uh, amazing ability to crunch through stuff. But they have to do it on the side, so when you see a dog with a bone, um, really got a bone, let's have a, let's have a sheep jaw bone, um, and it's got meat on it, it will be trying to it'll be shearing that off the side, so they turn the heads on the side and shear the meat uh, off the bone, and they just work like a pair of scissors, the carnassials. So things to remember, vertical jaw movement only, everything's sharp and pointy, this for stripping meat, this for killing, and these for shearing. Uh, right, right on the side. Whereas, your average herbivore, much calmer looking kind of skull. <coughs> Bit more massive because um, it's going to spend a lot of its time chewing because grass is a very tough silicaceous kind of food stuff and so it, it requires a lot of chewing 
So I think the most obvious feature of a herbivore skull would be this diastema here, this gap. The no big, in, no big canines, the canines are sort of fairly flat and indistinguishable from the incisors and in cows and um, sheep they've got a horny pad on the top so they're kind of nibbling, well actually sheep nibble and cows sort of use their tongues and rip the grass out, aren't really using their incisors at all. Now of course that's not universal horses to have teeth on both sides and wallabies have their horny pads at the bottom, they're the sort of little tiny kangaroo th things. So what's the diastema for? It's for rolling the grass, the uh, uh, herbaceous material, into a nice ball with saliva and shoveling it back onto these grinding teeth. So again taking the skull apart, these teeth sort of interlock together to form a grinding surface and the jaw movement then for the grinding is sideways. So whereas a dog or a cat or a bear can only move their jaw vertically, sheep are pretty much, and you can see those teeth interlocking together. It's like it fits, fits together like an M and a W. And they're just grind, 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 just to increase the surface area of their food stuff, try and get through a bit of cell wall to release the nutrients from inside. And of course those grinding surfaces get flatter with age. Even your molars are flatter than they were when they first emerged. So that's kind of it really. So we've got this sort of rotational movement. The teeth tend to have open sockets when you find a sheep's skull, you know, walking in the Lake District and there's been a dead sheep and you find a sheep's skull, you know, most of its teeth will have just fallen out because they've got open sockets so the teeth can keep regrowing. Um, Yep, that's, that's what I know. <laughs>